Hello everyone, this is Michael Wolf for WatchReport.com. It's been a while since my last video presentation, so I thought it was about time for me to share something uh, with you all. This is a brand that I really hadn't heard of until recently. This is a watch model from Thomas Earnshaw, and the model is the Admiral. It has a, a dive type appearance to it, dive watch type appearance to it, but and a name, but um, I would classify it more as a sport watch, and you'll understand why as we get into the watch a little bit. But I wanted to show what it looks like on a seven and three quarter inch wrist. There's a lot of wrist presence there, and a really nice strap, good length going to definitely fit over an 8 inch wrist with no problem and Thomas Earnshaw uh, sells this to I guess various vendors but I think you can find it on Amazon and depending on the vendor that you're looking at you can find this for well under $200 which at that price point it is a, a semi reasonable uh, value there are certain vendors that try to sell for retail at six or seven hundred dollars, which, in my opinion, is completely and totally um, unreasonable for what you get with this watch. So, let's uh, get this off, and then we'll go over the watch a little bit. This is a 43 millimeter case and I think about a 46 with the crown and 50 millimeters lug to lug as you saw even on my wrist it doesn't overhang at all it's not going to really overhang on on any on any you know normal size wrist probably seven inches and up uh, the the one thing that overall that I I, I don't care for for uh, about the watch and it's just a personal preference is I do not like the uh, branding engraved branding on the non-crown side of the case. I'd rather see nothing or maybe on the appropriate watch a healing release valve or something like that would be fine. We have a sign crown and then we have a push button as well. This is a push-pull crown. There's no discernible cl uh, um, clicks when engaging this crown which you know would obviously raise concerns about water resistance and gaskets and and all that wonderful stuff uh, but the watch is only 5 ATM water resistant anyway so um, that's probably why it's like that um, and this push button here operates one of the complications on the dial the biggest problem about the crown is it sets low. See if you can see how it sets low. Um, you really can't get a, a grip on it from overhead um, so when winding the watch it's easier to just kind of guide it like that to wind it. So um, let's go to the bezel which was actually one of the surprising things about this watch. Uh, at the sub $200 price point, I was expecting a very loose bezel or maybe even a fixed bezel or something along those lines, but this is actually a nice functioning dive bezel on a 5 ATM water resistant timepiece. Uh, there's no play wiggle. It doesn't knock out a place easy. Um, the markers are all supposed to be loomed according to the spec uh, spec sheet, but when I uh, tried to get a loom shot, which I, I have placed in the full written review on watchreport.com, uh, the loom uh, is very poor on this watch. So if, if loom is your thing, uh, even though loom, in my opinion, is a gimmick, um, probably not the watch for you. But still, very, very nice to see a, a good bezel like this on um, such a, a value-priced watch. Now, the dial, 
uh, was trying to get a good view there so you guys can see it. It is a multi-layer dial with the center portion uh, having a carbon fiber type appearance. The, the specs do not mention carbon fiber, so I don't know if it's true carbon fiber or if it's just a print. My guess at uh, sub 200, it's probably not uh, true carbon fiber, but it still has that nice multi-layer appearance. And then something else on a, on a $200, sub $200 price watch, all of the markers and numerals are applied. That's not something that you see very often. Skeletonized hands, again, loom overall on the markers, hands, and everything. You'll have to go over to the written review, but it's, it's very subpar. So the complications that we have. We have a power reserve between the, the or surrounding the 10 and 11, a day of the, or excuse me, a day of the month at the two, and then a small second hand at the six. And sometimes to see how, how smooth the movement is, a small second hand is really, it's really hard to use that to judge. Um, it seems rather, rather smooth, um, but um, I, I will say that this is a Chinese automatic movement um, or something very similar to that. Uh, there's no hacking feature um, and so forth when the crown is engaged. And let's take a look at that. Let me wipe off the back here a little bit. And there you can see the there you can see the rotor and the case back has specification information that you would expect surrounding the case back and no that is not a sticker on the case back that is actually some kind of uh, marketing scheme just to make the the case back look um, more appealing that is the the company logo and um, but again my guess is it is a Chinese maybe a seagull or something along those lines I actually used a jeweler's loop and tried to look around the movement uh, around the edges and I really couldn't see any discernible um, identifying marks runs about anywhere from how oh heck 20 to 40 maybe even 50 seconds plus or minus a day. I mean, it, it's all over the board how you would expect a, a, a movement like this. All right, strap. Really nice leather Croco embossed leather strap, which is, again, for a sub $200 price watch, sometimes you really just don't see nice straps. And I've reviewed a lot of custom straps, and by no means is this a custom strap but it is uh, very good quality. And again, it is uh, rather long. It's gonna fit over an eight inch wrist. Uh, tapers from 22 at the lug to 20 at the tail. Now, another really neat feature, again, something that on this, uh, at this sub $200 price point is something that you don't see every day. Let's see if I can get it to show up. There we go is a nice signed, almost custom, obviously I know this isn't a custom buckle, but it has that custom buckle kind of appearance to it. So, and it, and it is heavy duty. It's not something when you, on sub $200 watches, like a, a flimsy thumbnail style buckle or something like that. But that is the watch in a nutshell. Again, um, some Amazon vendors have this well under $200. Some try to sell it for uh, six to $700. Uh, the sub 200, uh, with it being an automatic movement, nice dive bezel, nice strap buckle, uh, could be considered a semi good value, but the six to $700 price point that some vendors uh, sell the watch for, my, uh, well, it definitely is, is very unreasonable. I would like to thank Thomas Earnshaw for providing this watch for review. I would like to thank each one of you for watching.
and stay tuned for my next video presentation here on watchreport.com. Thank you.